Hello students, this is your English lesson. Today we will read unit number 21 from Oxford Reading Circle, book 7. The title of the unit is The Beggar and the King and this is page number 204 from your book. A play in one act, characters, the king of a great country, his servant, a beggar. A chamber in the palace overlooks a courtyard the season is midsummer the windows of the palace are open and from a distance three distance there comes the sound of a man's voice crying for bread the king sits in a golden chair a golden crown is on his head and he holds in his hand a scepter which is also of gold scepter decorated stick a servant stands by his side, fanning him with an enormous fan of peacock feathers. The beggar outside, bread, 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 give me some bread. The king, longedly, longedly, slow or slowly and with little angry or with little energy. Who is that crying in the street for bread? The servant, fanning, oh king, it is a beggar. The king, why does he cry for bread? The servant, O oh, king, he cries for bread in order that he may fill his belly. The king, I do not like the sound of his voice. It annoys me very much. Send him away. The servant, Boeing, O oh, king, he has been sent away. The king, if that is so, then why do I hear his voice? The servant, O oh, king, he has been sent away many times. Yet each time that he is sent away, he returns again, crying louder than he did before. The king, he is very unwise to annoy me on such a warm day. He must be punished for his impudence. Impudence, not showing respect, use the lash on him. The servant, O oh, king, it has been done. The king, then bring out the spears. The, ki the servant, O oh, king, the guards have already bloodied their swords many times, driving him away from the palace gates, but it is of no avail. The king, then bind him and gag him if necessary. If need be cut out his tongue, I do not like the sound of the fellow's voice. It annoys me very much. The servant, O oh, king, thy orders were obeyed even yesterday. Thy, your, the king, frowning, frowning, look at someone with disapproval. That cannot be. A beggar cannot cry for bread who has no tongue. The servant, behold, he can if he has grown another. The king, what? Why men are not given more than one tongue in a lifetime? To have more than one tongue is treason, treason crime of attacking the servant. If it is treason to have more than one tongue, O oh king, then this beggar is surely guilty of treason. The king, pompously, pompously, pompously in a way that is too serious. The punishment for treason is death. See to it that the fellow is the fellow is slain, slain, kill in a kill in a violent way, and do not fan me so languidly. I am very warm. The servant fanning more rapidly. Behold, O oh great and illustrious king, illustrious, well known. All the commands were obeyed even yesterday. The king, how do not just with thy king? Just joke, thy your the servant. If I just, then there is truth in a jest. Even yesterday, O king, as I have told thee, the beggar, which thou now hearest crying aloud in the street, was slain by the soldiers with a sword. The king, do ghost eat bread. Forsooth, forsooth. Indeed, men who have been slain with a sword do not go about in the streets crying for a piece of bread. The servant, forsooth, they do if they are fashioned as this beggar. 
the king why he is but man surely he cannot have more than one life in a lifetime the servant listen to a tale o king what which happened yesterday the king i am listening the servant die soldiers smooth this beggar for crying aloud in the streets for bread but his wounds are already healed they cut out his tongue but he immediately grew another they slew him yet he is now alive the king ah that is a tale which i cannot understand at all the servant o oh, king it may be well the king i cannot understand what thou sayest though you sayest say id the servant o oh, king that may be well also the king thou art speaking now in riddles i do not like riddles they confuse my brain the servant behold o king if i speak in riddles it is because a riddle has come to pass the beggar's voice suddenly cries out loudly the beggar outside bread bread give me some bread the king ah he is crying out again his voice seems to be louder than it was before the servant hunger is as food to the lungs o king the king his lungs i will wagger or well fed wagger bet or agreement ha ha the servant but alas his stomach is quite empty the king that is not my business the servant should i not perhaps fling him a crust from the window fling throw forcefully the king no to feed a beggar is always foolish every crumb that is given to a beggar is an evil seed from which springs another fellow like him the beggar outside bread bread give me some bread the servant he seems very hungry o king the king yes so i should judge the servant if thou wilt though you wilt will not let me fling him a piece of bread thine ears must pay the debts of thy hand thine your that a uh, sum of money that is due the king a king can have no debts the servant that is true o king even so the noise of this fellow's begging must annoy thee greatly the king it does the servant doubtless he craves only a small crust from thy table and he would be content the king yeah doubtless he craves craves feel powerful desire of something he craves only to be a king and he would be very happy indeed indeed in fact the, ser- the servant do not be hard o king thou art ever wise and just this fellow is exceedingly hungry exceedingly extremely those do not command me to fling him just one small crust from the window those do 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 you the king my commands i have already given thee see that the beggar is driven away the servant but alas so king if he is driven away he will return again even as he did before the king then see to it that he is slain i cannot be annoyed with the sound of his voice the servant but alas o oh great and illustrious king if he is slain he will come to life again even as he did before the king ah that is true but his voice troubles me i do not like to hear it the servant his lungs are fattened with hunger of a truth they are quite strong the king well propose a remedy to weaken them the servant a remedy o king he stops fanning the king that is what i said a remedy and do not stop fanning me i am exceedingly warm the servant fanning vigorously a crust of bread o king dropped from yonder window for sooth that might prove a remedy the king angrily i have said i will not give him a crust of bread if i gave him a crust today he would be just as hungry again tomorrow and my troubles would be as great as before the servant that is true o king thy mind is surely filled with great learning the king therefore some other remedy must be found the servant o king the words of thy illustrious mouth are as very meat balls of wisdom the king musing now let me consider though sayest he does not suffer pain the servant therefore he cannot be tortured the king 
and he will not die the servant therefore it is useless to kill him the servant now let me consider i must think of some other way the servant perhaps a small crust of bread or king the king ha i have it i have it i myself will order him to stop the servant horrified o oh, king the king send the beggar here the servant o oh, king the king ha i rather fancy the fellow will stop his noise when the king commands him to ha 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 the servant o oh, king thou wilt not have a beggar brought into thy royal chamber the king pleased with his idea yeah go outside and tell his, uh, th this fellow that the king desires his presence the servant o oh, great and illustrious king thou wilt surely not do this thing thou wilt surely not soil they thy royal eyes by looking on such a filthy creature filthy disgustingly dirty thou wilt surely not contaminate thy lips by speaking to a common beggar contaminate pollute who cries aloud in the streets for bread the king my ears have been soiled too much already therefore go now and do as i have commanded thee the servant o great and illustrious king thou wilt surely not the king roaring at him said go the servant abashed goes out forsooth i fancy the fellow will stop his bawling when i order him to forsooth i fancy he will be pretty well frightened when he hears that the king desires his presence ha 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 the servant returning o oh, king here is the beggar a shambling creature hung in filthy rags follows the servant slowly into the royal chamber the king ha a magnificent sight to be sure art though the beggar who has been crying aloud in the streets for bread the beggar in a faint voice after a slight pause art thou be the king the king i am the king the servant aside the beggar it is not proper for a beggar to ask a question of a king speak only as thou art spoken to the king to the servant do thou likewise to the beggar i have ordered thee here to speak to thee concerning a very grave matter thou art the beggar i understand who often cries aloud in the streets for bread now the complaint of thy voice annoys me greatly therefore do not beg any more the beggar faintly i i do not understand the king i said do not beg any more the beggar i i do not understand the servant aside to the beggar the king has commanded thee not to beg for bread any more the noise of thy voice is as garbage in his ears the king to the servant ha an excellent flower of speech pin it in thy button hole to the beggar thine ears i see are in need of a bath even more than thy body i said do not beg any more the beggar i i do not understand the king making a trumpet of his hands and shouting do not beg any more the beggar i i do not understand the king heavens he is deafer than a stone wall the servant o oh, king he cannot be deaf for he understood me quite easily when i spoke to him in the street the king to the beggar art thou deaf canst thou hear what i am saying to thee now the beggar alas i can hear very every word perfectly the king fit the impudence thy tongue shall be cut out for this the servant o oh, king to cut out his tongue is useless for he will grow another the king no matter it shall be cut out any more anyway to the beggar i have ordered thee not to beg any more in the streets what manst do by saying do 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 not understand the beggar the words of thy mouth i can hear perfectly but their noise is only a foolish tinkling in my ears the king fit only a, a lash will tinkle thy hide for thee if thou dost not uh, cure thy tongue of impudence i thy king have ordered thee not to beg any more in the streets for bread 
signify therefore that thou wilt obey the orders of thy king by quickly touching thy forehead thrice to the floor the beggar that is impossible the servant aside to the beggar come it is not safe to tempt the patient of the king too long his patience is patience is truly great but he loses it most wondrous quickly the king come now i have ordered thee to touch thy forehead to the floor the servant nodding him and quickly the beggar wherefore should i touch my forehead to the floor the king in order to steal thy promise to thy king the beggar but i have made no promise neither have i any king the king who oh, he has made no promise neither has he any king ha 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 i have commanded thee not to beg any more for the sound of thy voice is grievous on to my ears touch thy forehead now to the floor as i have commanded thee and thou shalt go from this palace a free man refuse and thou wilt be sorry before an hour that thy father ever met thy mother the beggar i have ever lamented that he did for to be born into this world a beggar is a more unhappy thing than any that i know unless it is to be born a king the king fit thy tongue of a truth is too lively for thy health come now touch thy forehead thrice to the floor and promise solemnly that thou wilt never beg in the streets again and hurry the servant aside it is wise to do as thy king commands thee his patience is near and and the king do not be afraid to soil the floor with thy forehead i will graciously forgive thee for that the beggar stands motionless the servant i said it is not wise to keep the king waiting the beggar do does not move the king well a pause well in a rage well the beggar o king though hast commanded me not to beg in the streets for bread for the noise of my voice offends thee now therefore do i likewise command thee to remove thy crown from thy forehead and throw it from yonder window into the street for when thou hast thrown thy crown into the street then will i no longer be obliged to beg the king fit do commands me do a beggar from the streets commands me a king to remove my crown from my forehead and throw it from yonder window into the street the beggar that is what i said the king why dost do not know i can have thee slain for such words the beggar no do canst not have me slain the spear the spear peers of thy soldiers are as straws against my body the king ha we shall see if they are we shall see the servant o king it is indeed true it is even as he has told thee the beggar i have required thee to remove thy crown from thy forehead if so be thou wilt throw it from yonder window into the streets my voice will cease to annoy thee any more but if thou refuse then do will wish do hearts never had any crown at all for they days will be filled with the tra- terrible boring terrible boring and they nights will be full of horrors even as a ship is full of rats the king why this is insolence this is treason the beggar wills do throw thy crown from yonder window the king why this is high treason the beggar i ask thee will wilt do throw thy crown from yonder window the servant aside to the king perhaps it were wise to humor him o king after thou hast thrown thy crown away i can go outside and bring it to thee again the beggar well well he points to the window well the king no i will not throw my crown from that window no nor from any other window what shall i obey the orders of a beggar never
the beggar preparing to leave truly that is spoken like a king thou art a king so thou wouldst prefer to lose thy head than that silly circle of gold that so foolishly sits upon it but it is well thou art a king thou couldst not prefer otherwise he walks calmly towards the door the king to the servant stop him seize him does he think to get off so easily with his impudence the beggar coolly one uh, of thy servants cannot stop me neither can 10000 of them do me any harm i am stranger than a mountain i am stranger than the sea the king ha we will see about that we will see about that to the servant hold him i say call the guards he shall be put in chains the beggar my strength is greater than a mountain and my words are more fearful than a hurricane hurricane the servant of uh, thine cannot even touch me with one breath of my mouth i can blow over this whole palace the king dost dost do hear the impudence he is offering me why dost do not seize him what is the matter with thee why dost do not call the guards the beggar i will not harm thee now i will only cry aloud in the streets for bread wherewith to fill my belly but one day i will not be so kind to thee on that day my mouth will be filled with a rushing wind and my arms will become as strong as steel rods and i will blow over this palace and all the bones in thy foolish body i will snap between my fingers i will beat upon a large drum and thy head will be my drum stake i will not do these things now but one day i will do them therefore when my voice sounds again in thine ears begging for bread remember what i have told thee remember o king and be afraid he walks out the servant struck dumb stares after him the king sits in his chair dazed the king suddenly collected his wits after him after him he must not be allowed to escape after him the servant flattering o oh, king i cannot seem to move the king quick then call the guards he must be caught and put in chains quick i say call the guards the servant o oh, king i cannot seem to call them the king how are thou dumb ah the king's voice is heard outside the beggar bread bread give me some bread the king ah he turns towards the window half frightened and then almost instinctively raises his hands towards his crown and seems on the point of tossing it out the window but with an oath he replaces it and presses it firmly on his head how am i afraid of a beggar the beggar continuing outside bread bread give me some bread the king with terrible anger close that window the servant stands stupidly and the voice of the beggar grows louder as the curtain falls exercises a uh, questions one which details at the start of the play indicate that the king is wealthy consider objects actions and names answer palace gates o oh, great and illustrious king do not jest with thy king to list five of the punishments that the king wants the beggar to be given answer cut his tongue lash him not beg on the streets touch his forehead thrice on the floor and slay him three what kind of character is the king answer the king is arrogant and a very high headed man he has no uh, empathy for the poor four what does the king say in treason why is this strange answer to have more than one tongue is treason this is strange because a man cannot in one lifetime have more than one tongue five what joke does the king make about the beggar's lungs and what does the servant later say about the beggar's lungs answer the king says that the lungs he will wagger are well fed the servant says that his stomach is quite empty 6 what solution does the servant suggest to the king 
Why do you think the king refuses to do as the servant suggests? Answer: The servant suggests that they fling him a crust from the window because he feels sorry for the beggar. Seven. What solution does the king come up with towards the end of the play? Answer: At the end of the play, the king comes up with the solution that he will himself ask the beggar to stop begging and crying out loud on the streets. Eight. How does the beggar respond? How is the beggar's response different from what the king expected? Answer: The beggar responded as if he did not understand anything. He behaved rather impudently. The king had expected that he would immediately stop begging after getting orders from the king himself. Nine. What simile does the servant use to explain the effect of the beggar's cries on the king? Answer: The noise of thy voice is as garbage in his ears. Ten. What is the king's response to the servant's explanation, and what does he mean? Answer: The king calls it an excellent flower of speech. He means to say that the words spoken to the beggar are like flowers fit to be put on the pinhole. The beggar was not worthy of it. Eleven. What does the beggar think about being born into his palace in the world? And what, in his opinion, would be worse? Answer: That to be born into this world a beggar is a unhappy thing. To be born as king is worse. Twelve. What do you think the beggar means when he says the following? For when thou hast thrown thy crown into the street, then will I no longer be obliged to beg. Answer: He means to say that the day the king would throw his crown, he would not have to beg. It means it was because of the cruelty of the unjust king that he was forced to beg. Thirteen. What do you think is the message of the play? Answer. The message of the play is that a king of any state must be wise and just. He must be kind and sensitive to the needs of his subjects. If the king of a state is just, no one will have to beg, and there would be prosperity and happiness all around. B. Reference to context. Read these lines from the story, then answer the questions. One, O oh king, he has been sent away many times. Yet each time that he is sent away, he returns again, circling, uh, crying louder than he did before. A. Who is speaking? Answer: The servant is speaking here. B. Who is he talking about? He is talking about the beggar. C. Who or what could the character who is being talked about represent? Answer: The character represent poverty and oppression of the poor. Two. Thou art speaking now in riddles. I do not like riddles. They confuse my brain. A. Who is speaking to whom? The king is speaking to the servant. B. What is the riddle that has confused the speaker? Answer is the riddle is they cut out his tongue, but He immediately grew, uh, grew and other. They slew him, yet he is now alive. C. What does the speaker decide to do next? Answer: The king decides to get him driven away. D. How could the speaker solve the problem he has? Answer: He could solve the problem that he has by getting him slain. Three. If thou wilt not. Let me fling him a piece of bread. Thine ears must pay the debts of thy hand. A. Who is speaking to whom? Who is being spoken about? Answer: The servant is speaking to the king. The beggar is being spoken about. B. Discuss the metaphor that has been used and explain what it means. Answer: The metaphor used here means that if he is Does not fling a piece of bread to the beggar. His ears will have to pay the debt of his hands by listening to the annoying crying cry of the beggar. See, write this 
लाइन ऑफ डायलॉग आउट इन मॉडर्न स्टैंडर्ड इंग्लिश यू कैन यूज डिफरेंट वर्ड बट डू नॉट चेंज द इंटेंटेड मीनिंग आंसर If you will not let me give him a piece of bread your ears will have to pay the debt of your hands see words and meaning match the words with similar meanings soil contaminate falter stumble impudent rude sly massacre ball cry torture torment hurricane tempest go through the play and pick out all the words used to describe the characters emotions responses and ways of speaking answer is here are some words that are used to show the characters emotions responses and ways of speaking languidly oaking boeing impudence frowning pompously behold o king o great and illustrious king fanning vigorously angrily musing horrified roaring at him faintly nuddingly nudding in a rage coolly to where there are no stage directions talk about how that line should be delivered add other words to describe the way a character is feeling and how the actor should deliver the line answer a character may be feeling irritation with the voice of beggar he may be begging in the low voice again and again the beggar may be begging in the low voice again and again as a character of king may feel anxiety irritation headache increasing heart rate etc he should deliver the line in normal way not too much prudent and arrogant three which words used in the play are old fashioned make a list and give their modern equivalents answer Here is a list of old fashioned words used in the play and the modern equivalents they your die your just joke forsooth indeed harest hard do you sayst say wilt will thine your dost do the you canst cannot mainst means thanks for listening for new videos don't forget to subscribe my channel and if you like my videos please share and like